Welcome back to Jersey Matters. The sounds of hammering, sawing, and drilling continue on the Jersey Shore. But there's another sound, the click of handcuffs on the wrist of a growing list of homeowners arrested for fraudulently obtaining Sandy reconstruction money. Vanessa Tyler has more on the crime some thought was easy money. Vanessa. Well, Larry, the reconstruction post Sandy continues, especially in places like here in Ortley Beach, where the beauty of the ocean turned into a beast during the storm. But what also continues the arrests of those who thought they can turn their damages into dollars. This is a daily ritual for Jersey Shore resident Stephanie Kuzbit, taking her dog for a long walk on the beach and then checking on the construction of her post Sandy home. Now workers are putting the house on stilts. We got about 65,000 from the government to lift it and the projects is about $125,000 project. So the rest of the money, I don't know what's going to happen. As she worries about covering all the construction costs for her primary home, some of her seasonal neighbors have been using the government money for their secondary homes. Yeah, that's not very fair. Not only is it not fair, it's not legal. One of the sort of unfortunate truths that you see as a prosecutor is that anytime there's a pot of money out there, someone's going to have their hand in it. Sandy fraud is the state's newest crime, resulting in a new crop of criminals. These cases deal with people who have applied for money and in many cases received money, some cases over $100,000 for an individual to rebuild uh, homes that either were not theirs or that they claimed were primary residences, but in fact were vacation homes. And so that money is designed for people to rebuild their primary homes where they live uh, every day and not to rebuild vacation homes. And so people who are putting in for vacation homes are effectively stealing from people who need to rebuild their primary homes. The law is coming down hard on those who knowingly lie and say the money is for rebuilding their primary home. We have a big pile of cases and we're going through them as quickly as we can and we're making the arrests uh, on a rolling basis. We've already made over 50 uh, such criminal charges. People like Dennis Zawadzki, who authorities say obtained a total of $174,051 for his summer home in Little Egg Harbor when investigators say his primary home was in Clifton. Or Julie Schaber, who Honig says got more than $128,000 for a home on Ortley Beach she claimed was her primary home. Well, these are just a handful of the mugshots, authorities say, of people who tried to beat the system. Detectives say it is easy to figure out if a shore resident is there year round. First, check the heating bill. If there's no heat in the winter, chances are no one lives there year round. Perhaps the millions upon millions of rebuilding money was too enticing to resist. The vast majority of these defendants do not have prior crimes on their resumes. I mean, by and large, they're homeowners and, and people who are wealthy enough to afford second vacation homes. I could see why they did it, because it's, you know, we're not getting any help whatsoever if it's a secondary home. This is the family's summer home, now rebuilt. But Richard Bystrack says the temptation was just too great for his neighbor. Next street over, he, uh, from what we heard, he, he did... He, that was a secondary home and he um, got caught and he got arrested. They had to build from nothing. This is what it looked like after the storm and Richard's elderly parents had to use their savings. Still, they would never think of lying to get the money. We're not getting any funding whatsoever, so I kind of know why they're doing it, but it's still not right. I mean, the people with their primary homes, which we have one over here, is a couple and they're, they're, they suffered. The suffering more than three years after the storm. It's been tough. I actually, last week I broke down. I was done. Even the possibility of as many as 10 years in prison has some risking their freedom anyway. Before taking over as director of New Jersey's Division of Criminal Justice, Honig was a prosecutor in New York, where he had to prosecute those trying to get their hands on the money available to victims of 9-11. Uh, and so once you see 9-11 fraud, you realize that there's no tragedy too great for people to come in and commit fraud. And Sandy's just uh, the, same, the same scenario, you know, one of the worst natural disasters we've ever had in this country. And sure enough, there are dozens of people, if not more, and there will be more, uh, who are being prosecuted criminally for, for trying to steal that money. Well, the claims will continue to be scrutinized, which could result in more arrests of those who thought their sure homes 
were a sure bet. I'm Vanessa Tyler for Jersey Matters. Thanks a lot, Vanessa. You know, we tape this show at Monmouth University and recently this university enjoyed a huge success. Kimberly Kravitz will explain when Jersey Matters continues.